Hi everyone, Nicholas Devine, Assistant Professional out here at the magnificent Lake Carinup Country Club. And today I have for you the Rogue Iron family from Callaway. Now, this is a review by request. There have been a lot of you who have left comments down in my previous videos asking me to test this iron out. So here we are today testing it out for you. Actually, I tested it out yesterday. Now, I've come out here onto the second hole, or came out here yesterday on the second hole at Lake Carinup Country Club on the short course, and it's a par three that measures out at 170 meters. Now, you ask yourself, why have I come out here? Well, it's a simple reason. There is a seven iron in this series of family which I believe will get to this green. Now, normally, I hit a five iron, 170 to 175. There is definitely a seven iron in this Callaway family that will get to this green, hopefully. Anyway. Make sure you hang out for the video. I'll show you all the testing I did yesterday and then I'll leave a bit of a spill at the end of what I think of these irons and what I think will best suit you. Okay, firstly, before we get into that, let's remember that we always talk about the technology of these heads. Now, all of them contain urethane microspheres. Now, what that is, is a sound dampening and feel material that they've put inside the head to make it feel better and give off a better sound. Now, normally when you hit a cast iron head, you don't get a very, very nice sound. It sounds a little bit clunky. Callaway say they've put these this micro or the urethane microspheres inside the head so that you get a better sound and you also get more of a better feel. You always prefer the feel of a forged iron club in comparison to a cast. So they're saying these urethane microspheres will give off a better feeling and a better sound. Now, 360 cup face cup technology, we've heard of that before in a lot of Callaway irons. Then we've also got VFT variable face thickness through the face. Now what that means is for off-centered hits, you are going to get maximum performance out of that head. So a lot of these clubs are all about purely power, getting it up in the air and getting some distance with all of them. Loft-wise, we start with 31 degrees in the Rogue Pro, then we move to 30 in the Rogue, and then we actually move to 27, which is a world first in the Rogue X. That is an extremely, extremely strong seven iron. Now for me, back in the day, a five iron would be equivalent to 27 degrees of loft. So I'm expecting it, like I said, to get out to this green on this par three. Now I'm hitting this in the Project X LZ105 stiff shaft. Um, a very, very popular shaft on the market right now and an extremely good shaft. But when you go out testing and you go get fit for one of these clubs, you could come up with a different shaft, but I'm using this shaft for the purpose of this video. That's really all I'm gonna to talk to you about with regards to technology in the head. There is loads of other things I could talk to you about, but really we're here to see what kind of numbers come out of this club. Let's go hit it and we'll see what we can do. Just remember, I am using the Skytrack launch monitor to grab all my ball data. Um, and I'm also using the NXT Tour S as the golf ball. Okay, so here we go. We've got the Rogue Iron to start off with. Now, I'm not expecting this to get to the green at 170, but I'm assuming it's gonna get relatively close because this is 30 degrees of loft. It is still a lot stronger than my usual seven iron. My seven iron at the moment's about 33, I believe. So even that's a strong three or, uh, seven iron in comparison to old days of the 35. But this I'm expecting to go longer than my seven iron. But anyway, like I said, enough talking, let's get into the hitting. Now this is a quite a chunky head and the top line is very thick. It's not an iron that I'd normally use, um, but if you're buying this kind of iron, you're obviously buying it for extra forgiveness and to get a little bit more length and for, uh, distance out of it. But anyway, let's see how this goes. Good one to start off with and extremely high. For a club that's 30 degrees of loft, that went really, really high. Didn't hit it too good, it only got 146 out of it, which is not a good start. Sounds, I mean, with that urethane, micro urethane spheres inside it, I thought the sound would be a little bit different, but it's not. It doesn't really seem to have done anything to dampen the sound. Anyway, let's try again. Okay, I've hit that one a little bit better. 
see what numbers come out. There you go, 164. I felt like I got that one. I felt like I hit that one really well. I mean, 164 for a seven iron is ridiculous. I mean, normally I hit a seven iron about 148, maybe 150 if I'm lucky. Maybe I should just switch to a set like this so I can hit it as long as my mates. Hold on, let's try a few more. I mean, it still sounds pretty solid, but you know, I'm so used to that forge sound, so it doesn't sound exactly the same. Again, 165. Thing is a monster, it goes out miles. I might be able to hit this green with that Rogue X iron at uh, 27 degrees of loft. Anyway, I'll hit one more with this, and then I'm gonna switch over to the Pro. Okay, there you go, 166. These irons go miles, and funny enough, for the strong loft that it has, it does fly really high, and it does land softer, because I'm seeing them land soft in the distance. So, it's funny, you kind of think with an iron this kind of strong loft, you're gonna hit, see it hit the ground and punch out, but you can see with this wide sole, and because they've got the CG location down low, it sends it up quite high into the air. I mean, like, I was talking about G700 sending it up into the stratosphere. This is doing exactly the same, so you can understand how this is gonna be able to stop on the green. Anyway, I'm going to switch to the Pro, hit some shots with that, see the distance comparison change between this and that, and then like I said, I'll finish off with the X. Okay, now with the Rogue Pro, definitely an iron I can appreciate a little bit more. The top line is a lot thinner. It does look like more of a player's iron. Let's just see how this hits, because I'm expecting this to go a little bit shorter. It is 31 degrees of loft so it shouldn't go as far as the rogue uh, just because it's a little bit weaker in loft um, it probably won't be as forgiving as the rogue as well because the head the sole top line everything's a lot smaller so it is definitely based for the better player this iron anyway let's see how we go Now I've hit that one pretty solid. Frickin' hell, I hit that one very solid. It must be the head. Because I like looking at it a bit more, I've probably gone at that a little bit harder than the rest. But there you can see, that's gone out at 169. So this is quite a long iron as well. It's a very attractive looking iron, I must admit. Sound again, a little bit clunky, but a little bit more of a solid sound than the Rogue. I mean, I'm assuming you can hear that on the microphone, but it does sound solid. Funny enough, this thing's going longer than the Rogue. But again, like I said, I'm probably swinging at it a little bit better just because I like the look of this a little bit more. But you can see the ball flight comes out a lot lower uh, overall than the Rogue. This is a bit of a throw off, this is. Didn't expect this. Wowzers, this thing flights so good. And overall distance wise, like that one there I didn't hit as good and you can see that there was quite a drop there in distance from, you know, 165 to 170 to 138. And then that's where you can see the difference between the Rogue and the Rogue Pro. You're going to get a lot more forgiveness out of the Rogue than you will out of the Rogue Pro. The average overall you'll see when it comes up on the screen, I'll probably get better numbers out of the Rogue than I would with the Rogue Pro. Anyway, I'm gonna hit one more, and then I wanna get onto this Rogue X, because I just wanna see how long this thing can go. Again there, didn't hit that one well. Uh, let's see what numbers comes out of it. Kind of caught that one really low on the face and you could tell. And you can see there, drops out at 134. So there's the big, big telltale sign, the difference between the Rogue and the Rogue Pro. So for the, for the average golfer, you know, you need that extra little bit of forgiveness and you're gonna find that out of the Rogue more than you will the Rogue Pro. I'm gonna hit one more with this Rogue Pro just to see if I can get 
a good center hit like I did with the first two. And then we're gonna move on to the Rogue X. There we go, got one, that one a little bit better, back out to 165. So I've got that a little bit more solid and as you can see, there's quite a variation between numbers. Anyway, let's try the Rogue X. Okay, here we are, I'm excited. Rogue X, 27 degrees of loft. This thing is a five iron, not a seven iron. But anyway, I'm just excited to hit this to see if I can actually get to this green with a seven iron. Something I've never done in my life before. Now, this thing is chunky. This is what they purely call a power club. This isn't about forgiveness. This isn't about shot shaping. This one is just purely about, I'm gonna hit it further than every one of my mates kind of iron. It is a pure power club. And at 27 degrees of loft, this thing is just crazy. Anyway, chunky head, a lot more offset than the other two models when I look down at it myself. Top line's really thick. All right, I'm just gonna hit this to see what this thing can do. Everyone's been talking about this iron. Sounded fairly solid. Let's see what numbers come out of this thing. Oh my God, it's still up there. 174, that's insane. I hit my five iron that far. I mean, I hit the Rogue Pro, I think I hit one of the Rogue Pro shots 170, but I absolutely flushed it. That one didn't even feel that flush and it's gone 174. And I've actually finally hit this green with a club less than my five iron. That's unbelievable. Let's try again. I mean, it flights like a five iron comes out so much lower than the other two models, and so it should at 27 degrees loft. So it makes me wonder, are you gonna be able to stop this on a green? I mean, when you're coming in with a seven iron, you wanna be able to make this drop and stop. Mind you, in saying that, it does have enough ball flight to actually do that. But this thing's just a beast. 179 meters with a seven iron. That's insane. Anyway, couple more, and then we'll wind this video up. It feels so good. You know what? I actually don't mind the sound of this club at all. 175 and it's bloody consistent too anyway let's just hit one more and we'll call it a day all right i didn't hit that one too well so it'd be interesting to see what kind of numbers i get out of that judging from what i can see 173 this thing is what they say it is. It is an absolute beast. Okay, there you have it, the three models. Now let's take a closer look at the numbers and let's start with overall distance, okay? Rogue 164, Rogue Pro 160, Rogue X 175. That seven iron is not a seven iron, that is a five iron. And like I said, my seven iron, my five iron I'm out of my normal set roughly goes around that distance. And 27 degrees aloft does put it in a five, five iron category, if you ask me. But because of its wide sole, it did get enough ball flight where it could get up into the air and it did have relatively good stopping power. Not exceptional stopping power, but enough there where it could hold a green. But that club, like I said, the Rogue X, is purely there for the person who wants to absolutely bang it miles and hit it past everybody else. Rogue Pro, you do get a little bit more playability out of that club. Now, I did do some more testing beyond yesterday. Um, when I try to shape it right to left, I could do that quite easily with the Rogue Pro. With the Rogue, I could do it sort of, 
with the Rogue X, I found it a real big battle to try and get any shaping capabilities out of that iron. Spin numbers, um, Rogue was fairly decent. I look for roughly about the 5,000 to 5,500 spin numbers when I'm hitting a 7 iron. The Rogue came in at 5,469. The Pro kind of shocked me at 4,819 and 4,671 for the Rogue X. And the Rogue X, that lower ball flight, and those spin numbers kind of match up to show that when you look at the ball flight figures now which are coming up on the screen where it shows the actual flight of the three clubs you can actually see that the Rogue X has flown out a lot lower than the other two models but being 27 degrees in comparison to 30 and 31 of the other two models you can see why that ball has come out a lot flatter and like I said I finally hit that second hole green on the short course with something other than my five iron I was able to do it with the Rogue X seven iron so overall what am I thinking Rogue Pro really good feeling iron um, definitely based for your better player so if you are a better player and you're looking for a little bit more forgiveness uh, than what you'd get out of the X Forge or the cavity back or the muscle back versions of the Callaway irons then the Rogue Pro is definitely an iron for you to go look at Rogue standard Definitely an iron for all golfers in that mid handicap level to high 20s. Uh, if you want to use those kind of clubs, uh, they are good clubs. They're also good for entry level. But like I said, for a person who's looking for that little bit more forgiveness, then the Rogue is a good iron to hit. Rogue X, on the other hand, for me, is purely an iron about smashing it an absolute mile. If you want to be able to hit it past all your mates, then definitely Rogue X is the iron for you. Anyway, there you go. The Rogue family of irons, a little bit late, but finally got there. And I hope for all the people who have subscribed to my channel and left comments down below about me wanting to test these golf clubs. I hope I've answered all your questions. Someone did ask the question, would I go Rogue over the Ping G700? Roughly the same kind of club, do the exactly the same kind of thing. Personal opinion, it's up to you. Go try both. They're both a very good forgiving club and an entry level club. One is a lot more than the other, um, but you know, again, down to personal opinion, go try them both. I don't think you'll be just disappointed with either of the two clubs when you try them. Anyway, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button, and also after you've hit the subscribe button, make sure you click the little bell to the right. That gives you the notification of when the next video is coming up. Like I said, hit the like button, leave a comment down in the comment section if you've tried either of these models of irons and let me know how you went. But then most of all, we'll see you next time on ND Golf.